Welcome to our YouTube channel, where we aim to make the study of new next-gen CLEX-related topics and pharmacology easier and more approachable for nursing students preparing for the NCLEX RN and NCLEX PN exams. Pharmacology is one of the most important subjects for nursing students, as it plays a critical role in deciding the fate of the next generation of nursing professionals. However, it's also widely considered one of the most difficult subjects in the NCLEX exams. But fear not, because in this video, we'll be sharing over 30 strategies to solve pharmacology-related problems, complete with examples of each strategy that can be used in your exams. These practical examples and strategies will make it easier for you to understand the topic in detail and tackle any pharmacology question that comes your way. By the end of this video, you'll have a much better grasp of pharmacology and you'll be equipped with the tools you need to confidently approach any related questions in your NCLEX exams. So make sure to hit that like button, share this video with your classmates and fellow nursing students, and don't forget to subscribe to our channel to stay updated on all our latest videos. This way, we can reach out to more students and help them succeed in their nursing exams. Recognize adverse effects and contraindications. Knowing the potential adverse effects and contraindications of a drug can help you identify when it is not appropriate for a patient. For example, if a patient has a history of severe allergic reactions, you should avoid administering a drug that has a high risk of causing anaphylaxis. Apply critical thinking skills. When answering pharmacology-related questions, it is important to use critical thinking skills to evaluate the situation and make an informed decision. For example, if a patient is experiencing a severe adverse reaction to a drug, you may need to stop administering the drug and provide immediate medical attention. Understand the drug's mechanism of action. Knowing how a drug works can help you predict its effects and side effects. For example, if you understand that beta blockers block the effects of adrenaline, you can predict that they will decrease heart rate and blood pressure. A patient has a history of severe allergic reactions. Which of the following drugs should be avoided in this patient? A. Paracetamol B. Penicillin C. Ibuprofen D. Vitamin C Answer is B. Penicillin Knowing the potential adverse effects and contraindications of a drug can help identify when it is not appropriate for a patient. In this case, the patient has a history of severe allergic reactions, and it is important to avoid administering a drug that has a high risk of causing anaphylaxis. Penicillin is a commonly used antibiotic that has a high risk of causing anaphylaxis in patients with a history of severe allergic reactions. Therefore, it should be avoided in this patient. Paracetamol and ibuprofen are pain relievers that do not have a high risk of causing anaphylaxis. Therefore, they are safe to use in this patient. Vitamin C is a vitamin supplement that does not have a high risk of causing anaphylaxis. Therefore, it is safe to use in this patient. Before we continue with the video, I want to let you know that all the points mentioned can be freely downloaded from the link in the description below. Additionally, I wanted to recommend a book that will make your next generation NCLEX pharmacology practice a breeze. The book is called Mastering New Next Generation NCLEX RN Pharmacology, Theory, Strategies and Examples with Case Studies, New 2023 20, and 24 Guide. This book contains over 200 strategies with examples, easy memorization techniques, and over 150 case study questions that are specifically designed to help you prepare for the next generation NCLEX exam. With over 50 in-depth theoretical explanations of pharmacology topics, practice questions with rationale and explanations, this book will make it super easy for you to pass the NCLEX exam. As pharmacology is one of the hardest topics which may determine the fate for NCLEX, I urge you to download this book and start studying as soon as possible to ensure your success. Know the drug's pharmacokinetics. Understanding the drug's absorption, distribution, metabolism, and excretion can help you predict its onset, duration, and elimination. For example, if you know that a drug is highly protein-bound, you can predict that it will have a long half-life and may interact with other protein-bound drugs. Consider patient-specific factors. When administering drugs, it is important to consider the patient's age, weight, medical history, and other relevant factors. For example, if a patient has impaired renal function, you may need to adjust the dose or frequency of a drug that is eliminated primarily by the kidneys. 
Understand the drug's therapeutic indications. Understanding the specific conditions or symptoms that a drug is used to treat can help you identify when it is appropriate to administer it. For example, if a patient is experiencing symptoms of depression, you may consider administering a selective serotonin reuptake inhibitor. Recognize drug interactions. Knowing which drugs may interact with each other can help you identify potential drug-drug interactions and avoid harmful combinations. For example, if a patient is taking a drug that inhibits CUYP3A4, you should avoid administering a drug that is metabolized by that enzyme. Hannah is a 45-year-old woman with type 2 diabetes and hypertension. She is currently taking metformin, lisinopril, and simvastatin. She recently developed a urinary tract infection and was prescribed ciprofloxacin by her doctor. After taking ciprofloxacin for a few days, she noticed that her blood sugar levels were higher than usual. Which of the following drugs may interact with metformin and cause an increase in blood sugar levels in a patient with type 2 diabetes? A. Ciprofloxacin B. Lisinopril C. Simvastatin D. Acetaminophen E. Ibuprofen F. Digoxin. Answer. A and E. Metformin is an oral antidiabetic drug used to treat type 2 diabetes. Ciprofloxacin and ibuprofen are two drugs that may interact with metformin and cause an increase in blood sugar levels. Ciprofloxacin is a fluoroquinolone antibiotic that may increase the concentration of metformin in the blood, leading to an increase in blood sugar levels. Ibuprofen is a nonsteroidal anti-inflammatory drug that may also increase the concentration of metformin in the blood, leading to an increase in blood sugar levels. Lisinopril is an angiotensin-converting enzyme inhibitor used to treat hypertension. It does not interact with metformin and does not affect blood sugar levels. Simvastatin is a cholesterol-lowering drug that does not interact with metformin and does not affect blood sugar levels. Acetaminophen is a pain reliever that does not interact with metformin and does not affect blood sugar levels. Digoxin is a medication used to treat heart failure and irregular heartbeats. It does not interact with metformin and does not affect blood sugar levels. Therefore, the correct answer is A and E. Familiarize yourself with drug classes. Knowing the general characteristics of drug classes can help you identify which drugs are appropriate for specific conditions or situations. For example, if a patient is experiencing an acute asthma attack, you may consider administering a short-acting beta agonist. Be familiar with dosage calculations. Knowing how to calculate drug dosages based on patient's weight, age, and other factors can help you ensure that the patient receives the correct dose. For example, if a patient weighs 70 kilograms and the recommended dose is 10 milligrams per kg, you would calculate the dose as 700 milligrams. Use reliable drug information sources. When answering pharmacology-related questions, it is important to use reliable drug information sources to ensure that you are providing accurate and up-to-date information. For example, you may use drug reference books, online databases, or clinical practice guidelines to find information about specific drugs or drug classes. Consider patient adherence. When selecting a medication, it is important to consider the patient's ability to adhere to the prescribed regimen. For example, if a patient has difficulty remembering to take medications regularly, you may consider prescribing a long-acting medication that only needs to be taken once per day. Recognize different routes of administration. Knowing the different routes of administration for medications can help you identify which route is appropriate for a particular patient or situation. For example, if a patient is experiencing severe pain and needs immediate relief, you may consider administering the medication intravenously rather than orally. Be aware of medication errors. Knowing the most common types of medication errors can help you identify potential errors and take steps to prevent them. For example, you may be aware that look-alike or sound-alike medications can cause confusion, so you would take extra care to double-check the medication name and dosage before administering it.
Consider cultural and linguistic factors. When administering medications to patients from different cultural backgrounds or who speak different languages, it is important to consider cultural and linguistic factors that may affect their understanding and acceptance of the medication. For example, you may need to use a medical interpreter to explain the medication and its side effects to a patient who speaks a different language. Understand medication safety. Knowing how to ensure medication safety can help you identify potential risks and take steps to prevent adverse events. For example, you may be aware that administering a medication via an incorrect route or at an incorrect dose can lead to serious harm. So you would take extra care to double-check the medication order and calculate the correct dosage before administering it. Martha, a registered nurse, is working in a hospital and has been tasked with administering medication to a patient. While preparing the medication, Martha realizes that she is unfamiliar with the medication and the dosage instructions. She also notices that the medication has a similar name to another medication that the patient is allergic to. What should Martha do? A. Administer the medication as instructed on the label and inform the patient that they may experience side effects. B. Hold off on administering the medication until she is consulted with another nurse or pharmacist. C. Administer the medication at a lower dosage than indicated on the label to minimize potential side effects. D. Administer the medication but closely monitor the patient for any adverse reactions. E. Administer the medication but double-check the name and dosage with another nurse or pharmacist before doing so. B. Hold off on administering the medication until she is consulted with another nurse or pharmacist. Martha should not administer the medication until she is consulted with another nurse or pharmacist to confirm the dosage and potential risks associated with the medication. This is important for medication safety and to prevent harm to the patient. A. Administer the medication as instructed on the label and inform the patient that they may experience side effects. This option is not the best choice because Martha is unsure of the medication and its potential side effects, so administering it without consulting with another nurse or pharmacist may result in harm to the patient. C. Administer the medication at a lower dosage than indicated on the label to minimize potential side effects. Martha should not change the dosage of the medication without consulting with another nurse or pharmacist, as this could result in underdosing or overdosing the patient. D. Administer the medication but closely monitor the patient for any adverse reactions. Martha should not administer the medication without first consulting with another nurse or pharmacist to ensure medication safety. Closely monitoring the patient for adverse reactions is not enough to prevent harm. E. Administer the medication but double-check the name and dosage with another nurse or pharmacist before doing so. This option is a good choice, but Martha should not administer the medication until she is consulted with another nurse or pharmacist to confirm the medication's dosage and potential risks. Double-checking with another healthcare professional is a good practice for medication safety, but it should not be a substitute for consulting with another nurse or pharmacist. Just a quick reminder that you can download all the points mentioned in this video from the link in the description below. I also wanted to recommend a book called Mastering New Next Generation NCLEX Art and Pharmacology, Theory, Strategies, and Examples with Case Studies, NINU 2023 and 24 Guide. This book contains over 200 strategies, easy memorization techniques, and over 150 case study questions specifically designed to help you prepare for the next generation NCLEX exam. With in-depth theoretical explanations of pharmacology topics, practice questions with rationale and explanations, this book will make it super easy for you to pass the NCLEX exam. Download it now to ensure your success. Recognize the importance of medication reconciliation. Knowing how to perform medication reconciliation can help you identify discrepancies and ensure that patients receive the correct medications. For example, you may compare a patient's current medication list to their medication orders to ensure that all medications are accounted for and correctly prescribed. Consider pregnancy and lactation. When administering medications to pregnant or breastfeeding patients, it is important to consider the potential risks and benefits to the patient 
and the fetus or infant. For example, you may avoid prescribing medications that are known to be teratogenic or have a high risk of causing harm to the developing fetus. Be aware of medication allergies. Knowing how to identify medication allergies and take steps to prevent allergic reactions can help you ensure patient safety. For example, you may ask patients about any known drug allergies before administering medications and monitor them closely for signs of an allergic reaction. Understand the difference between brand and generic medications. Knowing the difference between brand and generic medications can help you identify potential cost savings and ensure that patients receive the correct medication. For example, you may prescribe a generic medication that has the same active ingredient as a brand name medication to reduce the cost for the patient. Consider special populations. When administering medications to special populations, such as pediatric or geriatric patients, it is important to consider their unique physiological and pharmacological characteristics. For example, you may adjust medication doses based on a patient's weight or age to ensure that they receive an appropriate dose. Be familiar with medication storage and handling. Knowing how to store and handle medications can help you prevent degradation, contamination, or other issues that may affect medication efficacy or safety. For example, you may store medications at the appropriate temperature, avoid exposing them to light or moisture, and use aseptic techniques when preparing injectable medications. Be aware of medication side effects. Knowing the potential side effects of medications can help you identify adverse reactions and take appropriate measures to manage them. For example, you may monitor patients for common side effects such as nausea, vomiting, dizziness, or rash, and report any serious or life-threatening reactions immediately. Understand medication withdrawal and dependence. Knowing how medications can cause dependence or withdrawal symptoms can help you identify patients who may need tapering or monitoring when discontinuing a medication. For example, you may be aware that benzodiazepines can cause physical dependence and withdrawal symptoms, so you would avoid abrupt discontinuation and consider tapering the medication over several weeks. Consider medication administration devices. Knowing how to use medication administration devices, such as inhalers, nebulizers, insulin pens, or infusion pumps, can help you ensure that patients receive the correct dose and achieve optimal therapeutic outcomes. For example, you may instruct patients on the correct use of an inhaler, including how to prime the device, how to coordinate inhalation and activation, and how to clean the device regularly. Understand medication interactions. Knowing how medications can interact with each other can help you identify potential drug interactions and take appropriate measures to prevent adverse events. For example, you may be aware that combining two medications that have a similar mechanism of action or are metabolized by the same enzyme system can increase the risk of toxicity or adverse effects. Consider the impact of comorbidities. When prescribing medications to patients with comorbidities, it is important to consider the potential impact on their other medical conditions and medication regimens. For example, you may avoid prescribing medications that can exacerbate or interact with a patient's existing medical conditions, such as hypertension or diabetes. Be aware of medication dosing in renal or hepatic impairment. Knowing how medications are metabolized and eliminated in patients with renal or hepatic impairment can help you adjust medication dosing to prevent toxicity or adverse events. For example, you may reduce the dose of a medication that is primarily eliminated by the kidneys in a patient with renal impairment. Understand medication tolerance and resistance. Knowing how medications can lead to tolerance or resistance can help you identify patients who may need alternative medications or dosage adjustments. For example, you may be aware that long-term use of opioids can lead to tolerance so you would monitor patients closely for signs of decreased effectiveness or increasing doses needed. Be aware of medication errors. 
Knowing how to prevent and report medication errors can help you ensure patient safety and quality of care. For example, you may double-check medication orders, verify patient identities and medication allergies, and report any errors or near misses immediately. Understand the role of medication in disease management. Knowing how medications are used to manage various diseases and conditions can help you select appropriate medications and optimize therapeutic outcomes. For example, you may be aware that beta blockers are used to manage hypertension and prevent complications such as stroke or heart attack. 